Okay, so these formulas are helpful and they're not, I mean, so this is kind of, you might want to write them down. It's kind of a magic sauce for the most people. Um, and, um, you know, that's how the rate is calculated for AOCV. Um, so AOCV model, the way it looks, this is actually a graph and a model from a recent library at 14 nanometer that we characterized um, last year. Um, actually, it's 10 nanometer, so it's like a few months ago. Um, and the way you see is it's uh, plotted on the depth. This is a buffer. And uh, as the depth increases on the x-axis, the delayed number goes down. And for early, the rate number goes up. And for both of them, the rate number is coming close to one, meaning it's it's the, the variation is reducing. So the delay is um, the variation in the delay is less as path depth grows. So that's that's the meaning of this picture. Okay, um, now AOCV, AOCV also starts to fail to address some of these challenges. Um, so variation accuracy and correlation, like I said, at 40 nanometer, the SLU did not show um, that much uh, deviation from the mean, um, delay showed more. Now at lower geometries, slope also starts to show you know, significant difference and variation. So that one is missing from AOCV now. So that needed to be counted. That's one. Um, the second is slope and load dependency on uh, delay uh, was missing from AOCV. Uh, and uh, that actually increases the, the, the runtime requirement. But uh, you need more accuracy. You need to provide more runtime and more, more simulation time. And the other two technical issues with the with the timing analysis were uh, common path pessimism removal and half cycle paths. Um, they were not addressed because of the numbers or the rate. And once you apply the rate, um, it, it's not uh, it's uh, the the CPPR and half cycle paths. They did not um, they did not take both the rates in the account. Um, so those four uh, issues they did not solve were not solved in the timing analysis, and the shortcoming of these four issues uh, they start to manifest um, you know significantly at 40 nanometer below. So it is no longer an accepted variation model for those advanced nodes. The, to address those, um, you need a new new uh, model, and uh, that's that's where. LVF started to pick up, and LVF stands for a liberty variation format, uh, essentially um, proposed by LTAB, IEEE, ISTO committee. It eliminates the need for stage and path types and corner delay to find delay rate. Um, it, uh, it's, LVF is many times slower than AOCV characterization because of uh, introduction of slope and load indices. Computation of delay rate is pushed into timing analysis phase. Now, the LVF, uh, it does not have the rates. There's no computation. What it is doing is it's only, um, it's only uh, taking sigmas uh, into the model. And, uh, um, and the rest of the rate number is computed inside the timing analysis. Now, other approximate method to replace Monte Carlo is sensitivity-based analysis. And that is much faster. And uh, so for a large number of cells in the production environment, um, SBA is used instead of Monte Carlo. So how does, how does LVF measurement and modeling uh, works? LVF, uh, like, like OECV, EOCV, um, LVF requires statistical BC models to perform Monte Carlo simulation. And the same delay and slope vectors are used to determine sigma for the sample using the Monte Carlo with a fixed sample size. Um, and the Monte Carlo simulation is repeated for a combination of slope and load. And the sigma is added along with delay and slope numbers in the liberty. So you have OCB sigma cell rise, OCB sigma cell fall, OCB sigma rise transition, OCB sigma fall transition. 
So this is LVF modeling. Um, similar to OCV, the only difference is it is only only capturing sigma and not direct numbers. That's the only difference, main difference. And there were other differences that I covered already in the last slide, um, and that's LVF. The concept is same, it's more granular. And this slide actually shows uh, how AOCV, POCV, and LVF is compared, uh, the way they are modeled. In AOCV, you have a table based on path depth, and uh, POCV, you have just one coefficient. In LVF, you have the entire table um, indexed on slope and load. So LVF is most granular. And uh, this is the chart that shows up that as and when companies move from one to the next. The orange one is OCV, yellow one is AOCV, and the green one is POCV. Uh, now, some people have been using um, POCV right um, from 28 nanometer, like very high performance and people who are very sensitive to their timing. And low power guys, they, they move slowly. They don't care about timing as much. And uh, variation has no effect, not significant effect on power. So they are fine. They continue to use old methods, even in the new geometries. Depends on the methodology, the type of chip, and everything else that uh, you have in your flow. Any questions at this point?